I have another ECU on the bench here. Uh, this one was sent to me by a colleague and uh, also a YouTuber who's got some uh, great videos. Uh, D Tech Engineering. Uh, Y'all make sure to check out his channel. He's got a lot of really nice videos. And I, I've actually been a sub of his for a long time. You see right there. I'm subbed. Um, but yeah, he, he, he does uh, some really good informative videos. And, uh, you know, I, I've been watching his channel for quite a while. And I guess he watches mine too. He ended up sending this to me. And we're going to try to help him out with it. So this particular one uh, is having charging issues. And uh, there's a couple of ways that we can, you know, test this. Uh, I guess for the video, I'm going to show just a basic way we can connect up. Um, usually I just open them in that rally, which we'll do that too. But, uh, first, let's go ahead and hook up our power and our ignition. And we're going to just hook it up to the scanner just like this. And we're just going to run the actuation for the charging. And we're going to see if the light cuts on. Because it should cut on just from actuating that. Okay, so this is the charging diagram for the 3.8. Uh, this is well, this says 3.8. I thought it was a 3.7. Maybe the other two are 3.7. But, um... This is for the Wrangler, but they're all the same. So let's see. We have our power coming in. We got that, that hooked up, and we have a fuse line coming into the generator, and then we have our control coming from the PCM. So that's going to be connector two, pin nineteen, and then we also have a sense wire, and this wire is supposed to tell the PCM what it's charging at, but. Uh, if I remember correctly, you don't don't need that one for testing it on the bench. Um, we're going to need a test light for, for this. Now, um, this one is a high signal coming out. So we need to clip our test light to ground. Because we're going to get voltage coming from here. Okay, this is my little test light. And let's go to C219. Which could be this one right here on the end. Okay. Now we're going to turn on our scanner. And luckily this one has the actuation for it. So we don't have to hook up a bunch of stuff to kind of tell it to come on, you know, naturally we can actually just force it on. I don't know why I went there. I need to go to a test. Some of the older ECUs I work on, I actually, you know, I have to force them to come on because there's no actuation for them. So there's one. So there's one actuation for it. That's the full duty. I think that needs to run an engine for that. Maybe not. Was there another one? Nope. I guess that's it then. Okay, so let's uh let's select the fifty percent. So we should be seeing something here on our light, which we are not. And if we check, let's see if we have any kind of signal coming out of here. On our green green line here, but I suspect we will not see anything, so yeah, she's, she's completely dead there, all right, so I already know this unit pretty well, um, it's controlled by a high side switch, so uh, basically, you know, we have our high side which is voltage going out rather than like a ground pulse or something so that would be a low side uh, and that's controlled by a chip that chrysler really liked to use this one right here and this is a mc uh, 33888 and you'll see it quite a bit and it handles a lot so this one is actually has both high side 
and low side switches. So the, the smaller out, they're the low side switches, pretty hollow voltage. And it's got four high sides, and they're a little bit different. So the two center ones, I think, were like 10 amp. They're pretty heavy duty. And the two outside ones were less, I think half of that. So around five. And our generator is on one of the center ones, which is going to be, let me grab the other probe here. So this one right here, we can see this diode, which is pretty typical um, on charging circuits. And we come here and you can see our signals will match now. So this is our output for our generator. And uh, you can pin it out, you know, you just come here from 19, from pin 19 and you can look. Like, Use your continuity on your meter, you, you can verify that that is your output. And for the video, you're just going to have to trust me. And since I know this chip pretty well, I know the actual input for it from the logic side, right? So I'm going to put my probe on the logic side, and here we can see we can see that we do have, let me slow this down a little bit. We do have our control signal for it to come on. So let's cut this down to 10%. Okay, let's try 20%. And you can you can see it changing. So we are getting it. It's just that the switch is not switching. So that's good. Because when it comes to repairing stuff like this, the, you know, the driver is the easiest thing to fix. If it wasn't the driver, you know, this logic circuit goes all the way back to, you know, the main processor. So if you wasn't getting a control signal, that's, that's big trouble. That's way, way more you have to do. But in this case, since we have that, it's only this guy is not switching. We only have to deal with why he's not switching. And uh, if you've never had something like this before, there's a lot of stuff you have to check. He has a lot of data signals that goes to him, like watchdogs and stuff like that, that you, you know, you would need to check. But fortunately for me, I run into these quite often. I, I already know that he's bad. You know, the don't know why, don't know what kills him, but he, he's gone. There's no hope for him. All right, so that's one way to test these, you know, with the scanner, and just some basic, you know, test light. You can check it to see if you're, you know, actually getting your charging output or not. Uh, but generally, since I work on the bench and I'm going to open the EC anyway, I usually test them like this. I hook up my power and my ground, and then I'll use this little uh, logic pulser. Uh, this is extremely old my dad actually found this and said he saw it he thought of me uh, and i guess he found it at a google and he got this for me and you know give it to me and i try to use it you know i try to use it just just for that but uh basically it's a, a logic pulser and what it does is it has two modes it has pulse and continuous and uh it's got some alligator clips on the end where you clip onto a voltage source and I believe this one, well, here's some stats for it. So it can handle 4.7 to 5, 15 volts. And um, it gives you an output wave. So uh, for the pulse, which is just one, it gives you uh, a 5 microsecond. Is that five? Yeah, 5 microsecond pulse. And then for the continuous, it gives you a 5 hertz, uh, you know, square wave. Okay, so I have my test line here. And I'm going to give you an example um, of what it should look like when it works. So I'm going to go to this guy right here, which is one of the other switches. It's not the, you know, alternators. It's something else. I forgot what it is. And I'm going to tell it to come on. 
and we should see that come on. Okay, and there's our a five hertz signal. All right, so that's what it should look like. Now I'm going to come over here to the alternator. I'm going to give it our signal. And you see we have nothing here. So definitely, you know, that chip is bad. So we need to replace it. And this one is very difficult to replace. Uh, there's a few things you have to be careful about. So since it's attached to the case and it uses very large uh, planes for the, not only, you know, for the switches, it's got large ground, like large thermal ground pane plane, got a large, um, you know, source pad. It just, it takes a lot of heat. And then we have the, like this, you know, BGA chip over here. So we can't let the heat really transfer because it will jack this up. So you really want to direct your heat here. Um, it helps if you preheat it a little bit and then try to do it. So I'm, I'm going to set up the preheater. I guess I'll have to unhook all this stuff. So uh, this is cooled down now, and I'm just going to hook it back up and give it a test. I'll start with our power here. Ignition. 12. Where's my ground? Okay, so there's my ground. So 34. There's 5. Thirty four. All right, get the power on. And first, we're just going to use our test light. And I like to check this guy. Uh, like I said, I can't remember what it goes to, but I like to check him first just as a benchmark since it was working previously. So I'm going to go ahead and give it my input. All right, we see that that one is still working. Now, the moment of truth, I'm going to try the charging circuit. Okay, I'm going to give it the control signal. Oh. There we go. So now that is working. And finally, I'm going to, let's just hook up everything. And we're going to do it with the scan tool just to complete the process. Don't suspect there'll be any problems, but you never know. So again, uh, green trace on the oscilloscope is going to be the uh, output from the uh, driver. Pink is going to be the control signal. Okay, go back to my scanner here. And then we're going to start with a, I guess just a 10 volt. I mean a 10%. All right, so I do see the light on. It's very dim. Let me. There we go. So I'm gonna do two uh, one millisecond divisions here. So there's our 20 volt divisions for our generator field output. So this is coming all the way up to uh, 
my base voltage, which is looks like about 14 volts, so that's good. Uh, my bottom is 10 volt division, so we, we are coming up the full 5 volts. Okay, so that looks good. It looks like everything is uh, working. Um, we can increase this up to 50 just to see it. should be a little brighter. There we go. It does. So uh, it's just good to go. It's all fixed. I'm going to test a few more of these little inputs. Uh, it takes quite a while to do those uh, just to make sure everything's got a good connection. But I don't suspect it to have any issues. Generally, when this chip has issues, it can often work. So I don't, I don't suspect any problems, but you never know. Then I'll seal it up and uh, send it on back. And again, uh, DTAC, I think it's for sending it in. If you need any more help, just let me know.